the Joe Rogan experience. But, you know, the since we're on this topic, can we talk a little yes. bit of vaccines? Because I'm it's something I've I have seen a lot of misinformation like on everywhere. <laughs> Facebook, on, you know, different news media outlets and and I think there's really like some some main ones that that I just feel are causing harm. And so um, there's really eight of them. We don't need to talk about all of them, but I think the eight really are that, you know, SARS-CoV-2 is not that bad. COVID-19 is not that bad. And, you know, vaccines basically don't prevent transmission. Spike protein from vaccines are cytotoxic, therefore they're really bad. Um, That vaccines are going to cause something called antibody-dependent enhancement, which is going to make you have a more severe disease. There's the vaccines are going to cause infertility. There's the um, vaccines are going to cause a more virulent, virulent um, strain or variant. And then there's one more that um, oh, that alternatives to vaccines exist right now that are just as good. And I think that there's a few of those that are really, I mean, just like blatantly, they're wrong. All of them, I think they're. But I mean, you know, there's some that are more important than others. And I think that. I would like to talk about them. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, the there's like two groups of people, mostly. One take thinks COVID-19 is bad, doesn't want it, gets, wants the vaccine, and the other one that thinks it's not that bad and uh, that the vaccines may be harmful. And there's also Do you people. think the vaccines are harmful to anyone? Well, of course. I mean... Do you know anyone that's had bad reactions to vaccines? I personally, interestingly, the only... I know a lot of people that have gotten vaccinated and the only person that I know that had something was like she had a headache for like a week and a half and then it went away. Um, Oh, no. Another person I knew had like nausea for like a a couple of weeks. They were like nauseous more more frequently, but it went away. Um, You know, do you think you would feel differently if you knew someone that had a stroke or someone who's had heart attacks, perhaps young people that have? Well, I, it's hard to say. So, you know, I do, people react differently, obviously. When you're giving, you know, hundred and more than 169 million people are vaccinated, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's half our adult population is, is vaccinated, fully vaccinated with COVID-19. And um, it's not zero risk. People are, some people are going to have an adverse reaction. And They do. It's a big world out there. You know, like if you were to give 169 million people a peanut or a shellfish, like some people are going to have very adverse reactions. Some people are going to die. Like it's it's a big world. But, you know, with the with the stroke or the heart attack, you know, you have to like like. So if you're trying to compare, for example, let's say, you know, you're looking at actual COVID-19 deaths and from heart attacks and strokes and Mm -hmm. you're looking at the vaccine adverse events reporting site VAERS. Right. And, And that as well. You know, you have to realize that basically in the United States, like in 2017, there was a publication in the Journal of Circulation. Someone dies from cardiovascular disease every 30 seconds in the United States, like every 30 seconds. Most of those people are above the age of 50 and certainly most are above 65. But every 30 seconds, someone's dying from cardiovascular disease. Every 40 seconds, someone in the United States has a stroke. Every four minutes, they die from a stroke. But this is also very, very rare in young people, particularly young, healthy people. But one thing that has occurred in young, healthy people that have been vaccinated is myocarditis. And some people have had blood clots, like quite a few blood clots. And there's speculation, right? The Salk Institute released that paper about the uh, spike protein causing uh, some sort of deterioration of the blood vessels. Did you read that? I looked at the spike. I lo- I've been looking at a lot of the um, spike protein. and That's from COVID-19. They're discussing it. They're talking about from, right. yeah. From, from the actual disease itself. Yes. So, um, you know, first of all, like there, you have to, like there's, you're, you're, you're either going to get infected with SARS-CoV-2. Most people are going to be eventually. We're all going to be exposed to it. So you're either going to be vaccinated when you're exposed to it or not. And... People are dying from heart attacks and blood clots, and even people are getting myocarditis like hundredfold times more than vaccines. Like the the myocarditis link from the mRNA, specifically the mRNA vaccines, is real. And I think the last I saw it was like fifty per million, which it's still rare. And it's it's happened to two people that I know. 
it, it, it so it, I, up until then, and actually now that you asked me, um, I forgot. I had a um, someone who's a, a, a supporter. Um, I talked about vaccines in one of my Q and A's I do, and they went and got it, and they were younger, and ended up having some kind of myocarditis. So I do know someone that had. had I, I don't know them, but they emailed me. Now, so, what happens if you have that? And like, how do you recover from that? But you realize it's happening to young people. So myocarditis is caused by two things. One, by inflammation. Two, by a direct viral infection. And it's more common in adolescents and young people. And it's an enlargement of the heart? It's inflammation of the heart. It can Mm -hmm. lead to that. Yeah. But it's it's happening in young athletes with COVID-19. Like, and it's happening like more frequently than people that are getting vaccinated. So it's still like, well, if the person that got vaccinated, look, it is a risk, but it's still pretty rare. And it also is treatable. In most cases, they treat it like within a few days and it's isolated. Why do you think that people like there are people that are completely asymptomatic when they get COVID or if they do get it, it's very mild. Do you think that's because they have a lower viral load that they've been uh, infected with? Or do you think it's their immune system that fights it off? Like, what do you think is happening? It could be any and all of those things, a right. combination of them. And, you know, but so like, even if you think, you know, if you're looking at just like the most extreme part of like the deaths, right? You know, you've got like over 624,000 deaths in COVID-19. Most of those deaths are happening in people over the age of 50. Um and if you look at like most of them have four plus comorbidity factors, right? Isn't that the average? I don't know if it's four plus I think for it's, average for. I think the comorbidities increase. Yeah, I think. Let's they find incre- out what the, what the number of comorbidities are in terms of like uh, deaths. the deaths. It used to be two point six, but I think it, they raised it to four. Really, the yeah. number of them are four. Okay, I think well, so. So I might be wrong, but so I know it was at least two point six. Right. So then there's the argument. Well, I'm healthy. I don't have comorbidities, right? I mean, so so what what should I do? Like, should I, you know, get vaccinated or or should I be exposed to the virus? And I think there's a lot of evidence and there's multiple lines of evidence. One, you know, there are people with mild symptoms that are getting post-acute COVID syndrome. They're getting this what people call long haul COVID. And a lo- and the majority of people What do you think that is? What is post what is long haul COVID? I don't know what it is. I think it depends on the the symptoms. I think there could be a variety of causes for it. Um, you know, so there are people and most of it's this is happening in teenagers to like fifty. Most of the people that are older are not getting this long haul COVID. It's like happening in people that are mostly not being hospitalized people that don't get hospitalized originally, like they have mo- mostly like pretty mild symptoms, in some cases even asymptomatic. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a study published in um, The Lancet like last year showing there was a sevenfold increase in stroke incidents in people under 50 in the United States compared to the year before that, before the pandemic started. And that is this probably was, because of the spike protein that causes this deterioration of the blood vessels and blood clots. Is that what it is from, well, the, from the virus? Well, I don't know what it is. I mean, there's lots of things, you know, viral infections themselves can cause hypercoagulation. They can cause blood clots, like just like that's like known from other viruses. Like that's some, there's inflammation. Without the spike protein. Without the right. spike protein. So let's, okay. I feel like I haven't got to address everything, but let's talk so about the spike protein. Real quick. I think this four points out where I would find this information. I hope that's the spot. Yeah. There is an average of 4.0 additional conditions or causes of death for data on deaths involving COVID-19 by time period, jurisdiction, and other health conditions. For deaths. Yeah. This is only 5%. The COVID was the only cause. and then for So for only 5% of the COVID deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned. So out of those 600,000 people that died, only 5% died just from COVID-19. Well, I mean, so you have people that are COVID-19 is going to make their comorbidities worse. And, yes. and that could be the same for a vaccine. It could be the same for anything, right? I mean, so like something that's going to activate the immune system. Yeah, but I've, the, the, the concern is with, with vaccines, the negative effects that what people are worried about, I think, is young people that are healthy that have negative effects, mm-hmm. like that have had strokes or that have had thrombosis or myocarditis and those issues, right? Well, I th- you know, again, if you look at the data... You know, young people are also experiencing those things at a higher rate. And are those all the people with the comorbidities? Like, I don't know. You know, like, I, I, I'm not sure. But 
it seems as though no matter which way you look at it, like it, it's, it is worse to be exposed to that virus. And like, how do you know that person that had that myocarditis wouldn't have had it exfold worse with the with the COVID-19? Because it's been shown to happen in young, healthy athletes, you know, and people has are- Has it been shown in large numbers? Like the athletes- More, more so, it, more so. It's more so than the vaccines, is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm yeah. saying that it's happening, myocarditis is from the vaccines, it's happening in younger people at a higher rate than from the vaccines. Do we have accurate data, do you think, about how many myocarditis instances we have from the vaccine? Well, you could argue there's an underreporting. Um, I think people, so anyone can submit data to the to the VARES, and I think when it comes to someone who's younger, um, they're more likely. I mean, so healthcare professionals have to submit to mm-hmm. the VARES if there's like something that's life threatening, which myocarditis could be, or if it's a death or something that's like you know changes their daily fun- functions, like congenital effects. They like they're, have to they're, submit they're, it. Yes, they are. If they are, they're. If- but if uh, they, how do they know that myocarditis is caused by the vaccine? It, they don't. But if, it, if the person had vac- gotten vaccinated, and by the way, there's no time constraint. Like, it's not like, oh, if they've only been you know, vaccinated within like, in two months. Like, they're, supposed to, they're supposed to submit to VAERS. Like, if someone was vaccinated they're and then something. To. Yes. Is there encouragement or discouragement to submit to VAERS? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, you know, if you again, even just looking at the deaths in every age group, even like, you know, people that are in my age group, 40 to 49, you know, there's 20,000 deaths that have been linked to the confirmed COVID-19 cases. Right. Whereas, you know, so in VAERS, it's 200. With, with and even if you triple that. For people with comorbidities, obviously, it's a real issue. Yeah. I don't know if that's if that's always the case. But yes, definitely with people with comorbidities. Because according to this, what we pulled up, it's 5% that are dying just of the COVID. 95% have an average of four comorbidities. Okay. Well, if that's true for all ages, um, then, you know, yes, people with comorbidities are more likely to die. But also younger people, like I said, they're more likely to get, you know, these long haul symptoms where I've known so many people you know, that they're, they've, they've gotten like their loss of smell or taste has been like several months. And there's now studies showing that, you know, if you, there was a huge study out of the biobank, um, UK biobank data, where, the, where right before the pandemic started, MRIs were done, brain scans mm-hmm. on like almost a thousand people, it was like over 800. And then the pandemic hit, people got COVID, some people didn't, whatever. So they brought these, these the same cohort of people back in for a brain scan. And, you know, basically they corrected for people. So they had people that they compared people that were the same age, same gender, same sex. And and then they um, also time between scans. And they found that both mild and severe COVID-19 cases caused a atrophy in the gray matter region of the brain. It was worse in people that had it more severe. Right. Understandable. But people that had mild cases that didn't go to the hospital had it. How you many know, people did they study with this? It was over 800. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, you and need, you need more data to confirm, but I mean. Were these people, did they stratify it by age? Did they, they have age, it by Age, gender, health? ethnicity, health, I don't know. Did, I don't, did they have comorbidities? Did they factor that in? They had people that age, the same age, you know, as mm-hmm. the, as people didn't get COVID, right. they didn't have it. I mean, you know, and this is they, several months. This is just months right. after. I don't know about the health. Did they monitor their nutrition or find out what kind of supplements they were? I don't on know. If, I don't. I don't know if any of that data was was you know in it. But do you think that data would be a factor at all? I don't know because I know people that supplement, that exercise, that have had um, were diagnosed with. They had a mild case and they were diagnosed with POTS. You know, post postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, where their heart was racing like tachycardia was racing just con- control like uncontrollably they were dizzy couldn't had no energy i mean this was months and they finally got diagnosed and it's like a lot of people coming out with this but you know do you know anybody that had covid and got through it with almost no symptoms at all and was very mild um well yeah no symptoms at all but the people that i do know most of them had some kind of weird taste issue like or smell thing for like weeks and weeks but um but you yeah, don't know anybody I, that didn't have that? Um, I don't, because most of the people I know that had it lost their smell. Watch the entire episode for free only on Spotify.